I always feel like with you, every time I ask you about Gareth and England, you separate the two. You're happy where England are, but you're not happy with Gareth. Uh, have I... No, I think that's bang on. Is that bang on? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, I think it's bang on. I think that Gareth Southgate, while I believe that he has conducted himself brilliantly in the job, I think he's a great statesman. I think he's a limited manager. Mm. I think tactically he gets it wrong. I think that the negativity involved in his selections aren't ideal. And ultimately, I think I honestly believe that he has cost us silverware. There's no way that we shouldn't have made the final in Russia. There is no way that England weren't good enough to make the final. What happens against France in that final would be up for debate. Yeah. But England should have been in that final. England yeah. were capable of being in that final. And not winning a home tournament effectively. I know we played one no, game in Rome. One game away, yeah. But what, not winning that home tournament and the, fo- and the performance in the final, I just found it so negative. We went 1-0 up after two minutes dream situation at Wembley against uh, not a decent not a decent Italian team we were 1-0 up after two minutes we did not have one more shot on target in the whole of the 90 minutes plus extra time that is completely unacceptable England should have gone for the jugular that night if we had really gone for it we would have won the tournament we would have had this hoodoo of 1966 off our back and the reason we didn't is because of the lack of ambition on display on a regular basis from Gareth Southgate he is one of the most negative managers I think I've ever seen no manager, no manager that I can think of off the top of my head will play three centre halves, two full backs, two defensive midfielders, <laughs> and then pick pick forward thinking players on their defensive properties. You don't play Grealish because he doesn't track back. You play Bukayo Saka as a winger because he's got naturally defensive properties. Mm. It's it's unbelievable. It's truly unbelievable that we can be that defensive, regardless of opposition. Mm. Uh, well said there Rory uh, in, in terms of the England squad though you look at the what we've got you look at the under 21s and players that might eventually get into the squad you think of the likes of Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott it's a fantastic sort of so it's a golden generation yeah. this is a golden generation you know I know the team that went to uh, Korea and Japan was seen as a golden generation and obviously they were mm. But, but the drop-off from... The starting eleven was fantastic, and maybe you had three or four more, but then the drop-off was quite quite yes. big. There is no drop-off in this England squad anymore, is there? No, no, you get you can have a situation where you could pick an England team, and legitimately, I would disagree, I would disagree passionately, but you could leave out a player of Mason Mount's qualities, for example. Yeah. You could leave him out of this yeah. England team. I could pick an England team and... Like Jack Grealish won't Jack start Grealish in my start. England team, for example. No, I could, yeah. you could create an England team and you could potentially... not, And you wouldn't look ridiculous if you left Phil Foden out of the England team mm. because we have so many brilliant players who can do so many different things. Mm. Like, this is such a gifted side. And I feel like we are potentially wasting this wonderful generation, this wonderfully talented generation on a manager that, while I like Southgate, I genuinely do like him and I appreciate the job that he's done for England, I think there is a ceiling and it's a low ceiling. How many players would you say, sort of positions, apologies, not players, positions would you say are up for grabs in this England starting eleven? You know, you've, got, you've got your bankers like Jordan Pickford will start. What, you, mean, you mean from a Southgate perspective? From a Southgate perspective. I don't think many are up for grabs at all. I think he knows. I, th- I think that he has the players that he trusts and it's not a it's not a principle that I disagree with, by no, the way. No, come on. The, the right side and the left side of Harry Kane are still up for grabs. No, it's, but it's no, not, I, think in, I think okay, Sterling, Sterling plays. I think Sterling plays. I don't okay. I don't think it's up for grabs mm. at all. I mm. think I think Raheem Sterling... So Raheem Sterling plays on the left so the right's up for grabs. The right is... Yes, the right and, and is that, up for that's grabs. That's Saka. That's I know Sancho plays on left, but he could flip. Yeah, that Sancho. Side. It's it's Foden potentially. It's, yeah. it's whoever. Mm. It's whoever can make that their own. But I would say that a lot of the positions are pretty much guaranteed already. Mm. Declan Rice starts. Yeah, but then the position next to him is not up, is is way up for grabs. It's going to be. I think come Qatar it'll be Jude. I, I think Calvin's maybe. It will be Calvin Phillips if Calvin Phillips is fit. Over Jude Bellingham, you think? Oh, no, this is not my selection. No, 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 no. This is not my no, choice. You think Gareth Southgate though would pick Calvin yeah, I think Phillips Southgate... over Jude Bellingham if Jude Bellingham is fit? I think Gareth Southgate respects respects people that have done it for him before. I think mm. that we have seen a long line of Gareth Southgate trusting players who he has previously yeah. trusted and hasn't been let down by. Mm. And you can make a case for Calvin Phillips being England's player of the tournament. Yeah. Therefore, I believe that he will go into the next tournament as favourite to start. Mm. Um, if he's injured, obviously, I think that then there is then a conversation. Is it Jordan Henderson? Is mm. it uh, Jude Bellingham? Yeah. There are there are certain players that I think could could Ward do. Ward Prowse re- is now in it, not for me, but is it? He's in the squad, yes. so Ward Prowse needs to deserve a mention. Yes, as well. absolutely. Yeah. Um, but but I believe that Gareth Southgate, with the odd tweak here and there, I think mm. he already knows because he is a conservative, frugal manager, mm. and therefore trusts players and players that he can depend upon what you won't get is a wild card in this England team you won't get the Gazza of 1990 what could have been the Grealish of 2021 you won't get that 
Mm. It will be players that we know. Raheem Sterling, for example, will play because he has been exceptional for England and exceptional Mm. for Southgate. And, And exceptional for City as well. Yes, but he may not. I think he starts for England regardless of what's going on at City. And that's where the issue that's where the issue comes because I believe playing for your country should be a meritocracy. You earn your place in the team. You don't you don't have it as a formality. And if and Gareth Southgate has showed to us already with the inclusion, the consistent inclusion, in fact, of Harry Maguire, despite what's going on at club level, despite the fact that he is so drastically underperforming for Manchester United on a regular basis, despite the fact that he should be nowhere near the Manchester United starting lineup on various occasions. Always starting for England. That's very interesting because I guess you could maybe say the argument or keep the argument with Jordan Pickford, who, let's be honest, isn't great for for Everton. Has a ricket in him for Everton, but for England, the, it's fantastic. The, I think he's. I think he's. He was very good for Everton. He, he was part of the reason that they stayed up. I think we have to give give yeah, uh, mm-hmm. him the, him credit there, Pickford. But the difference between say Harry Maguire and Jordan Pickford is Harry Maguire has loads of competition for his place. Like there are obvious candidates to take the place. Of, of Harry Maguire obvious Fikayo Tomori obviously should have an opportunity it's obvious it isn't it isn't controversial it isn't left field it's just obvious whereas there isn't the standout goalkeeper to take Jordan Pickford's Ramsdale place Ramsdale is come on no it's not standout no, it's not standout but he is pushing him no, he but, really is pushing him but if I were to say that if I were to say that Aaron Ramsdale had a better season than Jordan Pickford you may agree with me but equally you may not it isn't like, Fikayo Tomori obviously had a better season than Harry Maguire. There is no jeopardy there. There is no conversation to be had. Fikayo Tomori's performances over the course of the season were exemplary. Harry Maguire's were embarrassing. And yet Maguire starts. Whereas you can't make that obvious definition between the goalkeepers. I feel like I've opened up a can of worms with you. Every time I ask about Southgate, I, I see your pulse, everything. I'm I just worried. I can actually see it in do, your neck, do, do, your you know, do you know what it is, Ali? I do get quite animated regarding it because I'm worried. I think that this is such an amazing crop of players and if we don't you're secure worried. silverware now... You're worried. We've got now, to a semi-final of a World Cup and a final of the Euros and you're worried. Yeah, have you had a look in the trophy cabinet lately? No, I didn't go there because there's no point in going cobwebs. there. It's <laughs> cobwebs. It's cobwebs indeed.